Hello, everyone, and welcome to Phoenix. We're here on this uh, chilly evening. Uh, tonight we have Agaraj from the Space and Earth Observation Group of the University of Leicester here to talk about Marie Curie, her work, and her legacy, just to give you guys some uh, knowledge base before you go into this film. Agaraj? <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Right. Um, I do apologize in advance about my funny accent. It's from India. Um, I've been in England for five years, tried a British accent, apparently I sound Jamaican when I do that. Um, right. Um, are there any chemists in the audience? That's a good thing, right? I'm sure it may be controversial to <laughs> invite the physicist to give a talk on Mary Curie, but um, we like to call her our own instead of chemist. Um, so, of all the lectures and talks I've given so far in my scientific career, um, and I, I would believe today's one would be a special one, because um, so when I got this email about um, you know, giving a talk about Mary Curie, I found it um, uh, and a privilege to give a talk about her. Um, it'll be a very short talk, probably 10 minutes max. Um, uh, so my talk is called The Legacy of um, Atomic Number 84 and 88. So, Mary Curie was one of the giants um, in our field. Um, she once said, a scientist in his laboratory is not a mere technician, he is also a child confronting natural phenomena that impress him as though they were fairy tales, and I couldn't have agreed more. She was one of the giants, um, probably, not probably, I'm pretty sure they are on the same level as Albert Einstein, who once wrote a letter to her when she was going through her um, problems in personal life, which I'm guessing you've seen in the movie. Um, but what I'm here to talk about is not the personal side, but the scientific side of her life. Um, things like her thesis, how, you know, what impact does that book have in our species, of, in, in, with humans? So, to begin with, one of the toughest scientific challenge, a tale of one of the si toughest scientific challenge. If you look at this picture, um, can you tell me what that is? Which? Okay, probably one person knew. That's all right. So the reason I'm asking this question is because to give you a perspective of what a scientist goes through, or say what Mary Curie went through during her time. For those of you who don't have any clue about what that, that is, that's a good thing because Mary Curie was exactly in that position. No matter how much knowledge you have, how scientific how much advanced scientific degrees you have. If you come across uncharted territories like this, that's what you face. We have no idea what that was. So, um, so that's, that's probably what Mary Curie was thinking when she was asked to investigate, or when she was investigating this particular element. Um, she was a part of a field. Obviously, in those days, we would probably call it just science or physics. But she was a part of um, a field called, you can call it atomic physics or nuclear physics. And just to give you a, an idea of um, the beauty behind that particular field is its size. So I'm guessing from elementary school, you all remember atoms, electrons, protons. We all know atoms are tiny. But just to give you a perspective of how tiny they were, so you know you've got an atom, and in the center of an atom you've got the nucleus. Um, how small is that? So if you scale it down, so if a golf ball represents the nucleus, the first electron that revolves around it, or orbits around it, would be almost a kilometer away. So you can imagine how tiny, forget about atom, even the nucleus, how tiny it is. Um, so Curie, Madame Curie, and, her t and scientists from her field, they were working on something which now we call uh, radioactivity. Now there are different sorts of radiation. You can have gamma radiation, you can have X-ray radiation. Um, but the one specifically she was working on was something like this, where you have, I'm not, obviously I'm not going to give a full talk on nuclear or atomic physics, <laughs> but just to give you a brief idea. You have a nucleus in the center, and inside that you have got protons and neutrons. And the radiation of an alpha particle as you can see there, when it comes out of the nucleus, you can, that's a very, it's actually a very basic definition of what uh, radiation is, but just to give you an idea of the things she was dealing with. Um, so that's what, that's what was happening. So there was radiation from, as the gentleman front said, pitch blend, um, which was a radioactive material, and there was radiation from it, and that's what she was investigating. 
the radioactive uranium rich mineral and ore. Now here's the thing. When we talk about scientists, we say, oh, he or she analyzed it. That's a very simple, straightforward term, which might sometimes um, make scientists piss off, uh, get really angry, <laughs> especially when it's a product. Um, but yeah, it might make them angry because it's not simple. You don't say simply analyzed it. Just to give you an idea of a part, a very small fraction of the analysis Marie Curie did was this. So you have this element. You're going to break it down. Um, and the reason why she was doing this is because she found out that the radiation from this was much stronger than the usual uranium-rich core, which means that there must be some sort of a mysterious element hiding, which was radiating way more than it should have. So she started doing an analysis. Now remember, now we know what it is, but at that time she had no idea what was happening inside it. So the first thing she did probably was break it down. Break down the, the stone into small pieces and turn it into maybe powder. The next thing she would have done, probably, is um, put this powder in a test tube. Um, now, there are different processes. You can put an acid, you can put it on some sort of liquid, boil it, see what's happening. There are hundreds of combinations of um, analysis that she could have done. Obviously, now we know what she did, because after doing hundreds of them, one of them was right. So, but w w what does the challenge look like? It probably looks something like this. So she probably put the powder in the test tube. I do apologize about the amazing animation of the test tube. Um, she probably burned it and poured it out and then separated them. Uh, and then you get two different parts from that analysis. Now where would the source of the radiation be? Would it be in that container? Would it be in this container? It could be any. So she was still not clear where, where it was coming from. So you can see what kind of painstaking analysis she must have gone through to find out what this source was. And the reason why I decided to talk about this is because, as I said, it's very simple to say she worked 10, 20 years and then she found it. And I don't think that's justified because the amount of struggle you go through when you do analysis like this. Uh, and finally, she found out where the radiation was coming from, which finally re led to the discovery of two elements, um, radium and polonium. 84 and 88. But here's the thing. How does any of this matter? Obviously, they, if you're doing a degree in physics or chemistry, it does because it's in your course, you have to study them, you have to appear exams. But is that it? Is that, is that the only um, legacy that Mary Curie had? Is it just limited to degree and education and just expanding science? Does it have any impact on someone who probably has nothing to do with science? Um, I was going to say probably a geology, but the geologists would be really angry. <laughs> they are scientists. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that was the question. So what, what does her, any of her work have any impact on, say, a general public, if you have nothing to do with a physics degree? And that is the part that I really wanted to cover in a bit more details. Um, I hope this surprises you, because a lot of people don't know about this. Marie Curie's legacy can be seen everywhere. Just four simple examples are medical physics. I'm guessing that's something you all knew. It has an impact on industry, on agriculture, and also in your house. Um, so to begin with medicine, which is the most common one, I'm guessing most of you already know about this, is radiotherapy. Um, so her, obviously I'm not saying that she invented this, but the work she did, the foundation she, Perry Curie, and Becquerel, and other people in her field did at that time, this wouldn't have been possible. If you go back in time now and, and stop her from doing what she was doing, at that time she had decided, oh, I'm bored with science, I don't want to do this anymore, we wouldn't have had this. And so that, that's the impact she had on medicine. Next is industry. Now, a lot of people probably don't know about this. I'm not going to go into too much details, but just give you the <coughs> brief description on what, how it impacted the industry. So you have civil engineering where you use radiation physics. You've got material analysis, where you see if something is radioactive or not. You have measuring devices, which obviously like guide counter and other stuff like that. And checking oil and gas pipelines for leaks, which is probably one of the most important ones. And all of these have a direct impact on your lives, on each of us. 
Um, even agriculture, which is probably a massive one. When you go to Tesco, you should remember about Marie Curie because of this. Um, in agriculture, because radiation physics allows us to measure soil moisture content. It allows us to measure erosion rates, look into efficiency of fertilizers in the soil. All of these comes from radiation physics. But most importantly is the one in your house, which is a smoke detector. The smoke detector works on the principles of radiation physics. And the other one would be first aid. If you have a first aid box in your, in your house, I hope you do, especially near Christmas, um, there are tools which are sterilized by radiation. You have cotton wool and bandages and burn dressings. These all have radiation um, physics applications on them. Now, apart from these, these four that I've described, the most surprising one would be probably that her legacy is not only bound to Earth, it has already crossed the Earth's atmosphere, and that is space exploration, which is basically my field. Um, radiation physics, through radiation physics we can power, by power I mean it's basically used as an energy source, like a battery, for unmanned vehicles. Um, and one of them, which even, um, uh, Lester has been involved in many of these as well, NASA's Galileo mission, uh, and the mission we sent to Pluto, all of those spacecraft missions used the principles which was underlined by Mary Curie's work almost a century ago. So, and that's not just it. That these are her scientific research work. Herself, as Mary Curie, her legacy is still spread across in the academia. So there's something called academic genealogy. I'm not sure if you're, if you're familiar with the term. What it means is when you do your PhD, you have a supervisor. And then his supervisor had another supervisor. So there is a website that stores all that information. And if you look into Mary Curie's um, genealogy, you'd see something like that. So that's Mary Curie, all her PhD students. You can see how much it's spread across. It goes to Germany, India, US, a student from Paris. It's spread across everywhere. And the special thing about Mary Curie's tree, if you look carefully, is people on the right are in the chemistry tree because she was sort of both chemist and physicist, and towards the other side is, uh, is the physics stream, where she has expanded the physicists. And the funny part is, if you keep going that way, in the brunch, keep going down, it would lead to me at the bottom. <laughs> um, so that's why I said this um, talk was very special for me, uh, and I wanted to keep it as brief as possible. Um, the idea... Obviously, the movie would give you a much better idea about her life, but the idea behind the talk was to, um, was to let people know how science is not just about scientific achievement. It's a, it's a weird sentence. What I mean is how every day of our life has an impact on someone who worked really hard. And the best part, or if you may say the worst part about science, is that there is no authoritative body. Mary Curie could have easily said pitch blank, I'm sure it has an element that's radiating something. Believe me, it has. If she says that, there's no, in science it doesn't work like that. You have to provide solid evidence and you work hard for it. And that's what she did as one of the examples I showed in her analysis. Um, so that, that's what makes science so amazing. Because it's no authoritative body, you need full evidence for your work. And just to end it, as I often paraphrase to tell people about this, is that we physicists can, or chemists, urban geologists. Um, we see further than any other people. It's because we stood on the shoulders of giants. And this is one of the most famous conferences, and I hope they show it in the movie. And you can see Mary Curie there, and people like Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr. All the big giants was in this photograph. And with that, I would conclude my talk. Thank you. Thank you.